Hi, everyone. I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with my colleague, Sarah Dorn, who covers national politics. And Sarah, we are already talking about the Senate race for 2024. It feels a bit early, um, but last month after Kirsten Sinema, or late last year, she announced that she was switching from the Democratic Party to become an independent. So this, you know, opened the doors for other Democrats to run for her seat. And Ruben Gallego, who is in the House of Representatives now, he's a four term congressman, announced today, confirmed that he will be entering the race. Um, this is this is a big deal because you know, Cinema's switch in itself was was big news. Her and, and Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia hold outsized power in the Senate um, it, as moderates. They are able to thwart, you know, Democrat backed legislation and priorities just with their two votes alone, considering that Democrats control the Senate by what well, well, last year was, you know, split evenly 50 50. Um, now it is 51 to 49 in, in Democratic control. But the Senate map, to my point, the Senate map in 2024 really threatens that slim majority. And um, Cinema's seat particularly is um, very vulnerable because if two Democrats, you know, if a Democrat runs, Cinema runs, and a Republican runs in the general, then the vote, the Democratic vote could be split between Kirsten Cinema and a Democratic candidate, you know, allowing a Republican presumably to, to win. Right. One thing that I'm curious about is when one switches to be an independent, it almost seems like you're tossing away your chances. Is that too harsh an assessment? I, I wouldn't say that in in this case, particularly because, you know, she's she's an incumbent and I, I think it is a little bit harder for um, newly elected independents to to win elections. Um, but she she's an incumbent. Arizonans know her. So this isn't really going to change their view of her unless they are, you know, very dedicated and loyal Democrats. Um She's she's still caucusing with Democrats, so she, you know you can expect um, her to continue voting with them, except for you know in in the few circumstances we saw last year where where her and Ma Mansion sort of defected from the party and um, killed key Democratic pieces of legislation priorities. We saw it with a, a voting access legislation um, and. Uh, President Joe Biden's Build Back Better, you know, Social Security package. They they were the the two votes that really prevented Democrats from getting those over the line. Um, but but what's interesting about the Senate map in 2024 is that um, there there are 34 seats up for election, and 23 of those are in states held by Democrats. Um, and, and three of them are in states won by former President Donald Trump in 2020. Compared to Republicans, they are not all all of the um, 10 races where they are on the ballot in 2024 are in states that Trump won. So Democrats, you know, are really at risk of losing their majority in 2024. I think another thing it perhaps suggests is that there's a lot of pressure um for senators from those states to really move closer to the middle and move closer perhaps to at least looking like they compromise with the GOP agenda. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. And, you know, there are a number of retirements that we don't, there's, there's obviously a lot that can happen between now and, and 2024. Um, you know, Senator Debbie Stabenow, she recently announced her retirement. Um, she's in Michigan, and that is a seat that is considered uh, vulnerable uh, since Biden only, Biden won Michigan by less than five points in 2020. Um, Diane Feinstein is also expected to announce her retirement. She is a senator in California. That is, um, you know, a probably safely Democratic seat. Uh, but Senator Joe Manchin, for example, he has not said, and this is this is indicative of, of his style. So I will add that, that disclaimer, but 
you know, he has not said whether he is running for re-election or if he is going to run as an independent. I mean, over the weekend in an interview, he even suggested that he may consider a run for for president. So there's there's a lot um, there's there's a lot going on that we don't a lot could happen between now and 2024, obviously. And I'll, I'll just mention Senator Sherrod Brown uh, in Ohio, his seat as well. A Republican has already jumped in the race to to challenge him. Um, so so it it's interesting. We're at this juncture in January 2023 where we were supposed to be basically going into a period. The red wave didn't happen and the Senate was very much, you know, kind of a safe place. It sounds like there is a lot of turmoil we should be expecting to see because of these concerns coming up about 2024. Yes. And I mean, even in the weeks leading up to the midterm election, a lot of the political forecasts said that Republicans would reclaim the Senate. And there were a number of races that really came down to the wire. Um, you know, we just saw in the, in the Georgia runoff election with with Herschel Walker and um, Raphael Warnock, Democrats barely barely won the seat there. So it it was not a slam dunk for Democrats in the midterms at all. It was sort of an unexpected victory. So what should we be keeping an eye on other than obviously the elections and sort of the to and fro of who's retiring and such? In terms of how this plays out with Senate politics and some of the legislation that they're going to be looking at, is there anything that you think um, we should watch for? So legislating um, over the next two years in general is is going to be a hard sell just because we have a, a split Congress. So, um, you know, the Republican controlled House would have to agree on something that the Democratic controlled Senate would also have to agree on. And that's, you know, that's that's just un, unlikely to happen. I think that um, this this debt ceiling battle and, you know, passing a federal spending package um, when when the current f- fiscal year expires at the end of September, immigration policies, those are really high priority items, um, you know, at, at the top of Congress's list. And those are those are the things that I would be keeping my eye on now. So potentially posturing, not necessarily legislation, I think. Um... Hopefully we'll move beyond that, but uh, it's, it's good to get the heads up. Thanks, Sarah.